Please welcome Joss Whedon and Elizabeth Olsen. Musical chairs. I just feel like he's gonna he's gonna be talking more. So I feel like you should be in the middle. No, no, I'm just gonna I'm gonna. Because I'm gonna divert every question I'm to you. You, just, uh, you take all the stuff. What's the movie about? I have no idea. When you first started writing it, how did you? I'm, I'm done here. You can you can have this, Joss. You got it. No, I'm totally you good. Can, okay, good, good. How um, did you juggle all those characters? Yeah. <laughs> have you seen my question list? This is ridiculous. This is pretty much everything. <laughs> But um, I will start with you, Joss, actually. Uh, this is obviously Age of Ultron, and this was a, a character in the film that you wanted to use right back in the, in the day, pretty much the first conversation you had with Kevin Feige over at Marvel. Uh, what is it about Ultron that made you go, yes, that's the guy? Well, actually, um, he was really just a, a means to an end. When I first talked about him, I was like, you've got to have Ultron if you do this movie, and then there's a second one. You've got to have Ultron in the second one, and then and then he's building an android, and then they put Jarvis in, and then it's Vision. Because <laughs> then Paul Bettany could play the Vision, which he was born to do. <laughs> and uh, I was obsessed with that idea. And, uh, and then three years later, I got to call Paul and say, listen, can you do me a favor? Um, uh, but Ultron is just, you know, the first one, Loki is, he's fairly badass, but, um, but you know, he's, he's a thinker, he's a talker. Um, you know, he's a god, so he's got some strength, but he's not, you know, I needed somebody who could take on every Avenger. Um, and Ultron's been taking them on for decades. He hates them. And that was the other thing. It's like, he's been mad. He's been making, like, scowly face for five decades. Ah, I was, it's time for sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ultron storing nuts for the winter. And, um, uh, and I just thought, well... I, that's, there's, that much anger becomes interesting to me because at some point it's crazy. And that sort of led me down the path to who he was. But was it tricky to write in the end? Because it's, it's, it's one thing going into a meeting and going, in three years time, let's do Ultron, he'll be great. But when you sit down to write him, was it more difficult than perhaps you envisaged? Yeah, I, it was very difficult actually. I mean, he's somebody that I was rewriting constantly because, um, because you're creating from whole cloth, because he doesn't really have a voice in the comics besides grrr, um, <laughs> uh, which I'm good at writing, I can write grrr, but um, uh, it was the arg I couldn't find. Um, he, uh, I found his voice and instantly, like as soon as I thought of Spader, I re-found his voice because I'm like, oh, he could do it. But because he knows so much and has so much to be angry about and so much context, uh, you know, the, you could just draw from anything, and so it was very hard to figure out, well, what is we actually going to keep? What, what, what lands? What actually, you know, moves it forward and isn't just, oh, he's completely crazy. And James himself was like, this is hard for me because I'm reacting to things that often aren't actually happening. <laughs> Like, yeah, I mean, I can, I can agree with that because I had to react to a lot of things that weren't happening. But with <laughs> no, but he, I mean, emotionally, in the middle of a sentence. Yeah, I was actually curious sort of with um, him. You also wrote him to be kind of naive as well as like the smartest thing on the planet, and I thought that I find that to be very interesting, and that's where a lot of humor is when he becomes like this weird child. Yes. Yeah. Well, he's also, he's just. Kind of OCD, yeah. a little persnickety, <laughs> and uh, and it was fun to write a robot who was the, like the least robot-y robot ever. <laughs> um, and I also found that so many things changed, but I the first thing I did I was writing memos. I write a lot of memos, and um, and I wrote a monologue for him just to give to James like this is how he sees the team. And none of that was meant to be in in the thing. And I wrote a memo, and I, while I was writing, I was like, you know. This is the father-son thing. I was like, it's sort of interesting. Now that I think of it, it was sort of like, you know, every child kills their parent. Because when you have a child, you get it. You go, oh, it's not about me. And that's part of the cycle that leads you towards the acceptance of death. And, and then I wrote 
uh, don't worry, this will never appear in the film. <laughs> <laughs> and it's in, it's in his first scene with you, when he's like, yeah. people, you know, we have smaller people, children. Yeah. Design. I mean, he basically does end up saying that. So it's sort of like, I had, uh, I had to sort of search, hit far and wide to figure out what he would be saying, but at the same, what he would be on about. But at the same time, it was kind of the first stuff I'd thought of. Mm. And uh, and as Ultron, you've got James Spader in a uh, in a mocap outfit, yeah. which Elizabeth, you had an actor uh, opposite quite a lot. Yes, what was that a lot. Like While you? looking two feet above his head. Yeah, <laughs> it was the the thing that was. Um, frustrating about it is James Spader is one of the most dynamic actors and Aaron and I when we would have scenes with him a lot of times we were able to rise him on a platform so we could actually be face to face with him and he could still be justified being what is it 10 feet tall hey just eight, eight, eight feet half. sorry eight and a half feet tall <laughs> 10 in heels <laughs> um 10 in robot heels um and so Aaron and I would have such a hard time he, him doing this amazing performance and we had to look at these two red lights that were above his head and we're going like this the whole time just being like but I want to watch Spader um, but uh, you know there are a lot of things to making these kind of films where as an actor you just have to acquire new skills and that that was what's a fun challenge about this because it's it's difficult on a on a whole new level and challenging on a whole different level than doing a smaller character piece. I mean, this is a character piece, so I hate using that word, but yeah. Yeah, but so on Godzilla, for example, it wasn't some guy with an eye line 200 feet above his head, it was... No, it was just a building. <laughs> it was like, just like a screen. <laughs> it was just like a window, and I imagined there to be a sniper instead of a monster that looked like Godzilla. <laughs> it's like, that would scare me. Yeah. yeah. That is, that is really <laughs> they should just get a sniper. Yeah, well, that would, that would be safe. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's maybe not do that. Okay. Um, so that, let's talk about who you play in the movie. Yes. You play Wanda Maximoff, aka Scarlet Witch. Yes. Who is she? Um, she is. She's a. She's a twin from Sokovia. The last Quicksilver, Pietro, is her her twin brother. Last time we see the the twins is at the end of Cap Two, and they've participated for um, Hydra human experimentation, and they're, they're the only two who survive it. Um, they're very angry. They've lost their parents and uh, they blame uh, Tony Stark for that. And that is why they volunteered to be able to avenge their parents' death, basically. And uh, they bring a different flavor yeah. to this universe, don't they? Yeah, I think, I think what was really clever, what, what Joss did is he, he introduced these characters where our powers could literally ch um, change the direction of the film. Um, because I have the ability of uh, mind manipulation, um, I, I get to mess with them. And then it leads the Avengers into a whole um, new place that maybe as an audience you don't expect them going to. And, and through that we get to discover a lot, more, um, a lot more about these characters and their fears and their desires and their wants as people, not as heroes. Um, and some of the most like beautiful work comes in comes within that moment, um, and also the characters that don't have franchises that we love so much, we get to learn so much more about in this film, um, and they they really have such like amazing stories. And uh, and Joss, did you did you sit down to do the same for Wanda and Pietro as you did for Ultron, writing a, a one page memo or a, a speech to well, get into their Well, Wanda and Pietro are, are better established in, uh, in the comics than, uh, than Ultron was. Uh, so I, they, they seem to make more sense to me. I think, I think the, the biggest change from the first draft was that I took out all the sort of pigeon English not, not quite as yes. good. <laughs> and with Our Elias. broken English was, <laughs> and, was and, stopping and, broken. And, yeah, <laughs> and they were like, don't do that. Let us do that. I was like, okay, that's fine. <laughs> we sound like idiots. Um, uh, but it's always that thing of like, we live in uh, faraway land and speak English always. <laughs> uh, Even with each other. <laughs> yes, which you just sort of have to lean into, you just have to live with it. But, um, you know, for me, I mean, Pietro's easy, he's a hothead. Um, uh, it's not, that got, it, it, when you see the DVD extras, I think I mentioned this to you earlier, um, he's, he's a bit of a... Um, a coxswain. I'm not sure how to say this <laughs> delicately. But a swordsman, if you, if you will. The ladies. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, he's kind of um, arrogant and, and uh, fun. Uh, 
Wanda is, you know, my biggest thing with Wanda was to make sure that she was sort of the grounded, stable, kind of really political sort of grown up in the relationship. And partially because you need that, and partially because I didn't want to fall into a Simon and River situation <laughs> uh, from my earlier work. <laughs> And uh, Elizabeth, how did you get into Wanda's Head? I mean, there's not a lot of genetically enhanced people out there no. for you to do research with. I, I mean, it starts with, because I, I understand that there's a huge fan group out there for her character, even though she's not in a film. Are um, you sure? Are yeah, you sure? I know, I saw you yesterday. I've talked about you in interviews all day today, because you made my day. <laughs> I think it's just been reciprocated. <laughs> Um, yeah, that's so cool. <laughs> I've never seen someone like dressed up as me in a movie, so <laughs> it's really exciting for me. Um, <laughs> but uh, I don't remember what I was saying. <laughs> getting I just got head. so vain. Yeah. Um, uh, getting getting into Wanda's, head. Into Wanda's yeah. head. What was the thought process I was just going on, though? Um, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. So you start off with the comics and. Because the first time I, we got the job, there was no script. It was a dialogue with um, Joss, and we knew the arc. We knew what, where we were going. We knew how we were dealing with, like, the detail of Magneto or whatever. Um, it's easy to throw that away when you can, because they didn't know until later, <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> and, um, and it's also, we're enhanced by Hydra, so all that is accepted. And then you go into the comic books, and you see where she goes and where where the comics have led her and you kind of backtrack and try to think of what would lead to such madness in a way um, and I, that's how I started was by going to where her extreme was yeah. and trying to backtrack. And, and Joss was it always the case of for the, for the sequel you wanted not obviously Ultron but Wanda, Pietro, Vision right from the off? Yeah I mean uh, Ultron and Vision was an easy sale uh, Wanda and Pietro, there was a lot of doubt, like, can we sustain this many characters? They don't seem connected. I was like, I will connect them. I need them. Um, you know, they were a part of the, the Avengers from, you know, before I was reading it. They just, they're in the DNA. And I knew that they would give me so many opportunities to hear a different voice, a different perspective, literally a different accent, um, <laughs> and, uh, but also visually to yeah. give us a new vernacular, that their powers, they represent the idea that we come into the movie and it's a different world. Like, there's all this weaponry out there, there's all this knowledge, everybody knows there's heroes, everybody knows there's aliens, yeah. um, and you know, Cap makes a comment about the, all the new players that they've faced. I don't know who those were, but... Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, it's nice to speculate. Yeah, but the idea is, oh, things are getting weirder, and now the guys who were the the ubermensch, the cutting edge of like awesomeness are suddenly kind of you know, the old guys. And they're like, well, these are people are younger and have powers that we can't even understand. Yeah. Um, and that's, uh, that makes things more unstable, which is, you know, which helps the whole mood I was going for and the themes. And, uh, and writing something with this many characters, as you, as you said there, was that process, how difficult was that process? Were you surrounded by post-it notes, pieces of paper on your walls, like David Warner in The Omen? What, what, what was it like for you? Yeah, no, no. Uh, you know, ev I always am, especially with these movies. But I'm a big believer in charts and graphs and structure and flow. And with this, I mean, every Marvel film at some point just looks like you're hunting for a serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> it always does. And uh, you've got five walls of different ideas of how it's how it's gonna how it's gonna play, but um, uh, you know, it's all in service of how can I get into these how can I how can I justify spending time with these characters and, and getting into their hearts. It's so incredible getting to work with him, because he is <laughs> he is so he, it is he is so connected to all of these characters plot lines, everything from their point of view. He can hop around the script, he can hop around the characters. I can come up to him, ask him about pages that were new, that we're gonna shoot in a few days, and say, and he's in a completely different world at that time when I, you know, selfishly go up to him and interrupt him. <laughs> <laughs> and ask him, can you explain, can you explain this um, to me? And 
immediately it doesn't take it doesn't take half half a beat for him to know exactly what I'm talking about and him to answer my questions from my character's point of view even though he's been living in the head of a few other ones that day um, and I really really respected that and appreciated that <laughs> well um, I was basically throwing things out to everybody. I had to, I had to be able to take it back as well. I was like, what if we did this? That's tomorrow. Yeah. Wouldn't it be cool though? What about this? That was yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> bye. Like, you know, all the, we very um, uh, specifically choreographed all of the magic. Yeah. And then you and me and Jennifer White worked on it together. Um, I didn't ever actually tell anybody what we were doing. And it wasn't until late in the process that I started to see, like, you know, post viz and effects and things and go, this is all totally wrong. Yeah. I'm like, maybe I should have mentioned, uh, you know, because I've just sort of, I, I've got all these things going on, but I'm yeah. sometimes not so organized. <laughs> um, but we did eventually get it. Yeah, we did get a it. A lot of my favorite action in the movie is the way you spell cast. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> I liked it too. <laughs> and that's, some, that's something you worked on quite specifically, wasn't it? The yeah, movements and the. Absolutely. I'm pretty sure, Joss, you were writing it and doing Wanda moves at the same time. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I actually was, I was very lucky to have a director who had a very specific idea of how she would move. And it's hard. Like, how do you create a movement that is dynamic enough for these sequences, as well as, you know, it's casting spells, like, it's how, what it, you, there's no blueprint for that. You make it up. And Joss had a really creative um, way of moving. And Jenny and I would basically watch him, mirror him, take it into our own special room and, and play with that. And play with, um, just as, as dancers do, you like play with where your gravity is, where's the energy, is like where's the center of energy. And, and we would choreograph, he'd say, we need something to be high, low, left, right. You're gonna have a guy coming this way and that way. And so you choreograph for that, but you're, you're trying to create different levels and okay. yeah. you try and make it dynamic even, it's just kind of, it just comes out of um, like an imp Im improv basically, or directly, Joss will have a very specific idea for um, some moves as well. Yeah, there's, you have a dance background. Yeah. Which was enormously helpful. That, and you have the right, you have the fingers I have that very can do that. long, twitchy <laughs> fingers. Yes, twitchy. Aaron <laughs> kept looking at us and going, what are you guys doing? How do you do that? People How actually, do that? in interviews, people thought that it was, the twitch was from graphics. And I was like, no, I can do that for you right now. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Maybe I should figure that one out. <laughs> I can't explain it, Mother, but one day this will make me famous. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy, I promise. <laughs> Let me be an actor. <laughs> um, we, uh, who, wants to see, who wants to see a clip from the film? Hey. There you go. Uh, Joss, do you want to set this one up? This is the, the hammer lifting competition. Uh, well, you just did. I know. Um, but, yeah, it's, see, it's, uh, it, it sadly is Lizzie free because um, they didn't send us a Lizzie clip. Uh, but it's just, uh, and some of you may have seen it, uh, it's a piece of what happens if the Avengers uh, were all hanging out and some of them were drunk. <laughs> <laughs> Let's take a look at the clip, then we have time for a couple of quick questions for you guys. Let's take Whatever. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's unbelievable. <laughs> Whenever it's like, you're going to be an idiot, it's like, yes. This is so funny. <laughs> okay, we got time for a couple of quick questions. Uh, put your hands up, and well, there's a lady right over here. Uh, if you can get the mobile microphone to her, there should be one. There we go. Thank you very much indeed. Hi, um, so I'm not going to say anything, I'm just saying I've seen the movie and I loved it, it was great, oh, and cool. um, it was really cool. Um, and I wanted to say, uh, Elizabeth, I absolutely love the way you played Scarlet Witch in it, I think Thanks. it's fantastic, and I love the motion that you were talking about as well, it's, it looks amazing on screen. Thanks. And I was wondering, um, you've done a lot of like independent films, smaller films as well, how does it feel like to work on something that is so big and so uh, insane and so intense? And to uh, Joss, I wanted just to say, I hope you enjoy your really nice holiday after this crazy work because it's an <laughs> amazing movie and it's insane, so thank you. Cheers. Thank you. I like my question. <laughs> <laughs> Not Make a question then. Uh, 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 oh. Yeah, well, it's, I've never ever, had to work on something like this like Godzilla wasn't like 
any of this for me. I, I felt like I was making something smaller because I was filming in a house the whole time, basically, except for a couple scenes. Um, it first off, it was it was awesome to play a confident person. <laughs> like, <laughs> that just felt great. Um, but um, it really requires a different skill to to figure this out, and it was intimidating. And um, I mean, this is such, I'm such a fan of the movie. So Aaron and I would be like, okay, well, we have to figure out how we add something to this because Joss did his job. Now we got to do our job. <laughs> like he made it dynamic. Now we got to, you know, we got to show up and, and seem like we know our characters as much as these people do. And some of them been doing it for four or five movies. Um, the intense two month rehearsal period didn't yes, help. Yes, and that was really. Yeah, there's the, yeah. no rehearsal. On any of but however, I never get two actors at the same no. time, except for you and Aaron. Which was great. And Aaron and I, we really worked the same. And since we'd worked with each other before, we we would do like Skype. We would have meetings. We would because we we did, by just creating a, an accent together, you end up talking about everything else. Um, so you try and approach it the way you would any character, just trying to know it inside and out. And then you get there and you're just like completely out of your comfort zone at the same time of being like in awe of the, the size of something like this, like taking over towns and, and like just the, the, the designers, the amount of cameras that they use at the same time, like cameras that are on, in helicopters. Like it's just mind blowing the size of this film, the amount of crew that actually work on jobs like this. And you're working with the best costume designers, the best editors, the best sound, the best special effects. And these are all people who are the best at what they do. And it's just amazing to be in that company. It's, um, I, it's so lucky. And you get Joss, and he's incredible. Plus, if you act now, <laughs> now how much is that? <laughs> yeah, and so it's, it, even though I was terrified, I knew I was in such, um, safe company <laughs> and I, it's also an ensemble piece as opposed to like <laughs> me on my own is that what they're seeing the, what the, 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 the oh that picture yeah, that's what we started with that yeah was that like was the first week of shooting yeah that was the first week of shooting um, was you know <laughs> was the insane climax of film so it's yeah. like all this stuff has happened and everything is being destroyed good luck <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Here's Mr. Renner. Jeremy, do you have any advice? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. He actually did have he did have some good advice. Um, he did say, and he's the only person who I actually like did an advice talk with because oh. he and I were paired up like that whole first couple weeks, and um, and he was I was just like I can't believe we're like saving the world right now. I don't understand like what that feels like, what that looks like. <laughs> Um, and he was saying, well, you just have to think about the human story, like something as, like, as small as like, I just need to do my job so that I can go home to my family. Like, just think of something small. And then I was thinking, yeah, but my character's trying to save her nation. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like but it's a small nation. <laughs> it is a small nation, but like, um, but yeah, so that, I mean, that was a helpful comment. Yeah. I mean, a practical one that everyone should realize. I should have realized it, but just him saying it. No, but it. it's easy to forget because yeah. this is a madhouse and we do yeah. sort of throw you in it. And, and all of this stuff came very late because uh, they said, okay, so uh, there's been a few schedule changes. Uh, apparently, everyone's having babies. Um, <laughs> and because, uh, um, you know, Chris Hemsworth was unavailable because he was having twins. I was like, well, I can't get worse than that. <laughs> hey, Scarlett, what's up? <laughs> um, and uh, so they basically said, uh, OK, we start, uh, you know, at the Italian location. And uh, you have Aaron, Lizzie, and Jeremy. Like, the end of the movie. Yeah. Go. And, but also, you have these characters, uh, and I'm like, so I guess these guys have a through line. Uh, I'll get back to you on what that is. So it, um, yeah, everything is constantly shifting under yeah. you while we were saying, react to those robots, we'll put them in later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Amazing. Uh, when I said two questions, I, I meant to say, there's a lady here in the front row, and this is the final question, I'm afraid. No, it's the penultimate question. The penultimate I think question. Dress for success has Thank to be allowed. Yeah, dress for yes, success <laughs> has to ask a question. Bless you, sir. Um, I just want to say thank you, Joss. You've been one of the few consistently good influences on my life for the last 17 years. So, I, big thanks to you for that. 
Um, after working with a big machine like Marvel, what's the best thing that you'll take away from you when you go back to um, perhaps some of your smaller productions? Um, you know, uh, work with a smaller machine. <laughs> Uh, no. Um, the weird thing about Marvel is that they're big and they're small. I mean, I basically deal with two people in the entire organization most of the time, both of whom are really good storytellers. So it's, um, it's this sort of mom and pop megastore. It's this weird thing. I think, you know, the thing I take away is, is um, work harder, do better. And, uh, yeah. you know, obviously, uh, and maybe make a movie that isn't about 17 people. <laughs> but just, just maybe. Like, <laughs> I mean, if I made a rom-com, it would be about an orgy. I cannot do anything <laughs> except ensemble pieces. It's awful. Um, but, uh, you know, it, you, you sort of, you learn a bunch of lessons. And then you forget all of them. It's like every time you start filming, um, I... I actually realized this today. It's like being in a relationship, a new relationship. You're like, well, I'm not going to make the mistakes that I made last time. I'm going to make a bunch of new mistakes <laughs> and all the mistakes I made last time. It really is like that. It's like you just you learn it all over again. Um, so uh, hopefully I'll, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is let's bring it, to, let's take it down a notch, buddy. You know, so that you can so that you can make a film. And then rehearse. You can write it, then yes. rehearse it. Rehearsal. That would Rehearsal's be interesting. Great. And then shoot it, and then edit it in that order. <laughs> and not be re rewriting it uh, last week. Yeah. <laughs> any concrete plans, or are you still at the? Uh, any, any concrete plans, or are you still at the sort of nope. slowing down phase? No, nope, no concrete. Not even mixing any. Okay. Just, uh, just gonna sort of. You know, let's sit back and be tired. Do you know how to do that? Do you know how to not create? My friends give me three days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll show you all. I'll be a slacker. <laughs> I've read I really I've doubt read that. It's so four days then, basically. <laughs> You'll be like on your writer's retreat in a week. <laughs> I, could, I could slack. You don't know. <laughs> Elizabeth, you're, you're going into Civil War, aren't you? Captain America Civil War? I am. I guess yeah. I'm allowed to talk about that, yeah. I mean, I, right after this movie, I did, a, I did a biopic about Hank Williams with Tom Hiddleston, yes. uh, which is in the Marvel world. Um, Six and, degrees of Loki. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, that, was, that was really great, and that'll come out in fall. And uh, in a couple weeks, I go to Atlanta and uh, start Civil War. Yeah. And now the Hi. last question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, thanks. I mean, and I completely forgot what I wanted to ask anyway because of, of this. Thank you guys <laughs> for saying that. Um, just you've been talking a lot about um, all the challenges, of course, that this, uh, I mean, you had to face for this. Was there anything for either of you that turned out to be surprisingly, refreshingly easy? Oh, I want to take this one. <laughs> um, uh, her. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, I think I was four for four with the new cast. I think they were all yeah, amazing. Yeah, everyone's great. But, um, you know, this character means a huge amount to me. Uh, and uh, I, you know, I got to work with yet another of one of the, the best actresses and movie stars oh, yeah. of That's her I generation. <laughs> I was going to say our generation, and I realized, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, not, that's not how that works. Um, but no, I, uh, I, um, I really can't say enough, and I don't know if I ever said it to you, but Aww. you are extraordinary, and I was so grateful every day. Oh, thanks, Josh. Um, that was such a sincere moment. Yeah, exactly. Paul loves you. Always have. <laughs> Uh, follow that, Elizabeth. <laughs> what was the easiest for you? Um, I mean, honestly, what the, the part that I, I was um, nervous about is seeing if I could ha like hold my own with th that those actors. Um, you always, I mean, I think every time you start a job with people you respect, um, you're always nervous. And I'm sure people can relate to that in any field of work. Um, and, and yeah, so I felt like and they're incredibly welcoming and kind people, so they made it easy. Like, no one, no one was not welcoming to the new cast members. Everyone was, was so kind and so generous, and that felt really great. I mean, it's like what everyone wants is to like feel accepted in like a group of people they respect. <laughs> and um, and that, I did feel that, and um, I'm so thankful for, for their kindness. 
Fantastic. And on that note, that's all the time we have, I'm afraid. But thank you so much for coming. And thanks thank again. Thank you, guys. Elizabeth Olsen and John Sweden. Thank you so much.